everybody and welcome to part two of our lesson series on creating an e-commerce website system for ourselves or our clients. In this part we're going to focus on creating the MySQL database and the tables needed inside of that MySQL database that are going to hold all the different pieces of data for our store. Okay before we get started on that I just wanted to let you guys know something that I'm going to stick to my guns and give you guys six video tutorials by Christmas Day. But I think we're going to extend things a little bit because I was carefully reading through the comments for part one of this video series on YouTube. I was reading the comments and Matthias V91 said, will this tutorial include an admin system where we can add products? And so I thought about it and I said, you know, that would be a handy thing to add to the system in case people wouldn't know how to make an admin panel for this sort of thing to where people who don't know HTML, CSS, and PHP and all this crap can add inventory products. So say somebody in your office that works in the office that you want to give privileges to to get in there and add inventory and deal with the managing the store online, you can create an admin panel for them, which will be a part of the store in the back end that will be secured and it will have a secure login for that section. So it's probably going to go past six tutorials in total but I'm gonna to stick to my guns and make sure you guys have six tutorials for this series by Christmas Day I've decided to use adamcorey.com as the place where this all I have right now is this one page and there's really not much even on it so I'm just gonna strip this page down and use this as my store example so adamcorey.com is where you can see this progress live online and that's how I'm gonna build live online that's how I'm even gonna test I'm going to test all my PHP scripts live online against my MySQL database that's on my server. So in order to get a MySQL database for your website set up on your live server online, go to your hosting account online. So wherever your hosting account is, you log in and you go into your cPanel. Now maybe you're hosting with GoDaddy or something like that and GoDaddy uses a custom cPanel to where it's not the regular cPanel that you see on most hosting providers. So what you have to do is go into your GoDaddy cPanel and look for MySQL databases. If you're in cPanel like I am, finding it is very easy. It's right down here in the database section. You just click MySQL databases. And like I said, if you're on something like GoDaddy, you might want to ask for assistance from the people at GoDaddy if you're having any trouble finding any of these things to click on or any of the connection information for your MySQL database once you create it. So you get to the page for MySQL databases and just take the time to read all the information on this page. Now right here it says create new database. And mine is going to have a prefix of Adam K H O U underscore. So I'm going to put my store. All one word, all lowercase letters. And this will have a prefix, my store will have a prefix of Adam Ku underscore there. So on some hosting providers, in the MySQL creation, MySQL database creation section, they might automatically add a prefix to yours like that. Now I'm going to click on Create Database, and I already have a couple of databases in there, but maybe yours has none yet, but that's no biggie. So it says added the database. See Adam Ku underscore my store. Now I'm going to go back, and I'm going to make sure that this database has a user. So let's make ourselves a new user for this database. Username the new user for this database is going to have that prefix as well. I'll just put the word builder. So that'll be the username and I'm going to create a password now. And you're going to need to have the user, a MySQL username for our MySQL connection file that we're going to create in just a few minutes. So you'll need to have the database created, you'll have to have a user and a password. Okay, so I added my name and made a password and then I created the user. Now I have that new user right there. And I have my new database right here. So I have to add that user to that database. So let's go to add user to database. Make sure we get that builder my store add and I'm just gonna give it all privileges for right now 
make changes go back All right, now you have your database set up. It's ready to go. It's waiting for you to program stuff into it. And there's the user. So now we can create the script. We can pretty much exit out of here. Get into the main screen of your cPanel again. And you can go into PHP My Admin to view that new database. But it won't have any tables set in it yet. You can create tables manually within PHP My Admin. But what we're going to do is set up our tables through script. Okay, now we're going to get the MySQL connection script going. Make sure we have the proper data inside of it so we can open our store files again in Dreamweaver. I'm going to go to File, Open, Store Scripts, Connect to MySQL. I'm going to go to DevelopPHP.com, the Learn MySQL section, and here there's Connecting to Your Database. I'm going to grab this little scripty poo right there. Back in Dreamweaver, make sure I'm in Code View, get rid of all that and pop in the script I grabbed from develop PHP. And for me, my database host I know is localhost because that's the type of server I have. If you're on GoDaddy, you might have a host string that looks something like this. But for most people using cPanel, it's localhost. So my DB host is localhost. My DB username was I think Adam K H O U underscore builder and I'm gonna put my password right here and my database name was Adam K H O U underscore my store I think. Let's see. I wrote it all down and you should have wrote all yours down too. Yes. So now once I put my password in here, this script, this script will connect to my MySQL database. Okay, now that my MySQL file is all set up, the proper data inside of it needed to allow me to connect to my MySQL database online, I'm going to have to test that real fast. So under the example at DevelopPHP where it shows you how to connect, there's a test file so you can make sure that you're connected. I'm going to grab the code, press control C, go back to Dreamweaver, file, new, PHP, go into code view, remove all of that, and replace it with control V with the code that you grabbed from the site. So what this is going to do is require connect to mysql.php, and if there's any problems, the script will not process past that point. If it does, it's going to echo out to you success in database connection happy coding so once it brings in connect to mysql this file is going to let you know if there's a connection error by the data because of the die functions within connect to mysql.php those die functions and the errors will display if they happen to be any if not you'll get this success message so let's file save as and I think it was MySQL Quick Test. Let's just name it that. MySQL Quick Test. So name it MySQL Quick Test Save. Now we're going to FTP things to the server. And I'm using FileZilla. So let's connect. And this is the directory at adamcorey.com. And here I'm inside my store scripts folder. I'm going to add this MySQL quick test and I'm going to overwrite the connect to MySQL file that's already there. So now on my server online is the connect to MySQL file and the MySQL quick test. So all I have to do is grab the name of that file, go actually online with a browser to that script and run it and see what happens. Let's go to adamcorey.com or whatever your site is forward slash store store scripts forward slash and that file name mysql quick test let's see what happens success in database connection happy coding that's what you should get if you don't get that and you get some kind of error output that's generated from the mysql connection file then you'll know you have problems with some kind of data that you put into the connection file it's not correct or your database wasn't created before you tried to run this file or something 
Now using this same file, I'm going to show you how to create tables for your system, which you could go into PHP my admin and create them manually if you like. But I'm going to show you how to set up scripts that will help you do it faster. So let's take MySQL quick test, file, save as. Actually, we're going to delete MySQL quick test off of the server right now. You don't want that hanging around. You don't need it anymore. Now this one we're going to save as create admin table. And this is the file that's going to generate the admin table inside of the new database. The admin table is going to hold login credentials for the various people that you want to let into the system to manage the store's back end. If it's just yourself, then you just put yourself into that database table. If it's multiple people, you put them all in. Now let's just get rid of this. Make sure we keep require connect to MySQL there. And we're going to pop the code in right here that's going to be needed to create the table through script. Okay, now before I explain this piece of script, I'm going to test it very quickly. Make sure it works before I start explaining it because so after I explain it, if I go and test it, it doesn't work. I'll feel like an nincompoop. So I'm going to put create admin table up on the server, on the live server. I'm going to copy that name and I'm going to paste it into my browser back on my live site. Let's go to store scripts forward slash. We're going to be removing a lot of these scripts that we're putting up right after we use them. So let's press enter. Your admin table has been created successfully. And I'm going to go into PHP my admin on my server in just a second and show you how it looks inside of the PHP my admin software. Now let's discuss the script very quickly first. What we're doing is requiring the connect to MySQL file that we set up. Then we build an SQL command, which is pretty much the syntax that communicates to the MySQL database. This is SQL, structured query. So what we're doing is feeding it certain syntax to create table. Table name is admin. And inside of that admin table, there's going to be certain columns or fields. First one is going to be ID. With it, it's an integer type field. The value of 11. Not null means it cannot ever be empty. And it auto increments. That means each time one is added, it'll auto increment a, a unique ID for each admin. So if it's just you, you'll have just one admin inside, and you'll have one ID for yourself. If there's a few admin, each admin will have a unique ID. Username, this is going to be varchar255. Actually, we could make it a lot smaller than that, say 24. This one's not null as well. That means it can never be empty. 24, not null for the password. That's a varchar as well. That can, That means it can be... This field can hold a mix of symbols, numbers, letters, whatever. Various characters. I like to just call that various characters when I look at it. And then last log date. That's going to be the field name for the date field that will hold and update each time the admin logs in. So if it's multiple admin inside, you can see what, when, what day each person logged in last to manage the store. And then this one's set to not null as well. That means it cannot be empty. The primary key on this table is ID field. The unique key is username. So we want to make sure each username inside of this table is unique. So after you set up your SQL command, you can set up an if and else condition statement that will actually execute the command for you. And inside of the if condition, you just write in the MySQL query function and you feed it your MySQL command or you feed it your SQL command. So what will happen is if it's successful in the SQL command and the query it'll echo your admin table has been created successfully else there'll be an error something was not right with the query or the command and you'll get this critical error and you'll have to investigate that on your own I have no idea. It should just work. Okay, here I am back online on my server host control panel. I'm going to go to PHP My Admin in the database section now. 
it's going to redirect me to PHP my admin where I can then log in and my password was press go and there you are in your database I'm going to click on the left Adam Q underscore store and in there there's admin table and you notice I didn't create this admin table inside of PHP my admin we created it through script and there you go now we're gonna make a few more tables we can close out of here I just wanted to show you how PHP my admin works and how you can get in here and manually adjust things and create tables just like we did through script you can do that manually you can just go click on the main link here and there it says create new table on database blah 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 so if you prefer working in PHP my admin manually I sometimes do even though I know how to write scripts that interact with my database I like to go in manually a lot and do things I don't know why I just like to maybe I'm more of a visual person I don't know alright let's close out of that and let's close out of that and so what I'm gonna do is make a few more scripts okay now we have two more scripts to create two more tables one's called create products table dot php the next one is create transactions table dot php and I decided to keep the create customers table out of the mix since we're going to be gathering their the person's email address and the person last name and some other data that you can use within your system to see who bought things from you if you like the only reason you would need a customer database is to know who bought things from you when and that's all going to be within the transactions table and I'm going to explain that script in just a second first let's talk about the products table this one is going to be created when we run it through our browser and it's going to create a table called products into the database on our server it's going to have the first field is going to be ID int not null auto increment the next field in that table is product name and that's going to be the unique name that you give the product you can see down here I have unique key product name that's going to make that field in this table require that each addition or each item within the table have a unique product name no two can be exactly the same the next field is price and that's going to be bar char 16 the next field is details anything you want to have if you want to write paragraphs about a certain product however much information that you want to put on the product page when the person goes to view that product you can put into this text field here which will give you 10,000 characters up to 10,000 characters the category and subcategory fields the only reason I put category and subcategory is to show you guys if you wanted to have say a main button on your home page that said clothing and then within that when they click clothing they'll see subcategories like pants socks shoes shirts whatever and you can you can be as flexible as you need to with breaking down subcategories into subcategories of subcategories however your catalog needs to be set up and you're gonna have to set up your table customized for your needs I mean you can't expect me to know exactly how many subcategories of items you're gonna have and script my tutorial to be that way so I'm just gonna make it one general sort of way and you guys will have to be intuitive enough on your own to create however many trees of subcategories you need to but when you see me set up my items you'll understand what I'm doing and you can expand upon yours date added will be the date that this inventory item was added to the store so primary key is ID unique key is product name that's all there is to the products table for now and I'm flexible to where I can keep this I can have to add two more things you know maybe I'll realize a few hours into production that I need another field in this table I can go back in and put it in it's no problem and if I do anything like that I'll show you guys now the create transactions table is the one that talks to the PayPal IPN script that we're going to set up and this is going to be gathering data behind the scenes when people actually purchase things through your site using PayPal and I'm going to discuss all of these variables you can see what's here or pay or email, first name, last name, the payment amount. Down here, MC fee shows you how much PayPal took out for their percentage for doing the online transaction, which is 
a very reasonable rate. I think PayPal gives good rates for online transactions. But I'm not even going to go into trying to explain all these fields just just yet until we build the PayPal IPN script later on in the lesson series. We're going to build a script that talks to PayPal behind the scenes and all those values are going to be popped into your transactions table. Right now all we need to do is get that table made. So I'm going to FTP these two files, create products and create transactions. And like I said, we're not going to create the customers table because within this table you're going to have all the names of your customers anyway and their email. So I'm going to put these two, I'm going to FTP these two to my server just like I did create admin table. I'm going to use my browser to execute them and they'll create the tables when I do. So let's go to your site. Make sure you FTP those files. Store scripts. Navigate to create products table. Your products table has been created successfully. Let's put that file name here. Create transactions table now. Press enter. Your transactions table has been created successfully. So now let's check in PHP my admin and make sure. PHP my admin. Click on Adam Corey store here. And there you go. There's your three tables admin table, products table, transactions table. Let's get these to show up here in the list. And there you go. There's all three. You want to click on transactions to see how the structure is set up. You can see there's nothing in it yet. There's no transactions yet. But it's ready to start storing data. So that concludes creating the MySQL database and all three of the tables that we're going to need in the onset here of a system like this. And now we can start actually adding inventory to our site. We'll create a little admin page in the next lesson in part three we'll have to create an admin login page that way we can access the back-end page that's going to allow us to add inventory items upload the picture for the inventory item and put in the details price all that junk and each time we press submit on that it'll put it into that products database so for some of you guys who are I'll show you those scripts once again if, if you happen to be in a hurry and you or you want to produce your system as I'm producing mine in real time I'll show you the scripts here you already saw create admin you can full screen and HD this on YouTube to see all the various characters there in the script here's create products table and here's the create transactions table since this one's a little long I'll show you lines 1 through 23 right there you can see all of those clearly now here's line 23 through 39 or 24 through 39 you can pause any time within there if you want to type it all out but like I said I'm gonna have all these scripts available for you guys if you want to just wait till the end and download them if you happen to be typing things out things go wrong for you whatever you want to see my exact syntax I'll have everything available at the end of the lesson series free for download but I'm not gonna put a download package together until the end of the series so if you want to if you want to produce with me as I go, you'll have to type it in and pause and stuff like that. So these are the three scripts that create the tables, and once they're created, you remove those from the server, the live server. You don't want those three there, so delete them. And there you go. We can close that out. So in part three, we'll create the admin area for the person or people who are going to manage the store items and various things to do with the store.